morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Over the last two weeks, we've seen our women and men in uniform step up to the plate again and again. In seniors' homes, in northern communities, they're there for where we need them most. And because they respond to the call of duty without hesitation, whenever they're called upon, it can be easy to forget the toll this work can take. Members of the Canadian Armed Forces have always been there to do tough, dangerous jobs. So after a lifetime of service, far too many veterans live with chronic pain. Today, we are launching the Chronic Pain Centre of Excellence for Canadian veterans at McMaster University. This centre will focus on national research, training and education to provide veterans with the support they deserve. No one, least of all those who have worn the maple leaf, should be without the care they need. Later today, I'll also be meeting with nurses here in Ottawa to thank them for their outstanding work. I know I speak for all Canadians when I say that we are incredibly grateful to the women and men who are keeping us safe right now. <coughs> nos hommes et nos femmes en uniforme ont toujours été là pour nous, et on doit être là pour eux aussi. Aujourd'hui, on inaugure le Centre d'excellence sur la douleur chronique pour les anciens combattants canadiens à l'Université McMaster. Ce centre sera axé sur la recherche, la formation et l'éducation à travers le pays pour offrir aux anciens combattants les services dont ils ont besoin. À tous ceux qui ont servi le Canada, merci. Tout le pays vous en est reconnaissant et on est là pour vous soutenir. Over the last two months, a lot of Canadians have faced very challenging situations and very difficult choices. Just take workers in the fisheries industry. You can't harvest lobster from inside your house. So that leaves you trying to figure out how to either space people out on a fishing boat or cancel your operations. It's not an easy call to make. On top of that, Prices and demand have gone down, putting financial pressure on fishers and their families. Taken together, this adds up to a really tough time. So I want you to know that we're listening, that your local MPs are making sure your concerns are heard, and above all, that help is on the way. Today, I can announce that we are investing almost $470 million to support fish harvesters. First of all, we are creating the Fish Harvesters Benefit. If you're expecting a 25% drop in income this season, you'll get support to cover 75% of your losses, up to about $10,000. And as a reminder, if you qualify for the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy instead, remember that we'll be re extending it beyond June. We're also introducing additional non-repayable grants of up to $10,000 for fish harvesters who own their own business and need support to bridge to better times. And for workers who are worried about next year, we will change employment insurance rules so that fish harvesters can apply for EI benefits based on the earnings of previous years. This all builds on the investments we've made for fish and seafood processors. And for farmers and aquaculture fisheries, we're also launching a $100 million Agriculture and Food Business Solutions Fund through Farm Credit Canada. This is yet another option to help agri-food companies facing unexpected financial strain. Whether you're a fisher, a food processor or a farmer, we've got your back. And I know all Canadians do too. And to everyone who wants to show their support, buy Canadian. Pick up some Canadian cheese to help out a local dairy farmer. Have a fish fry or buy Canadian lobster. Not only will it taste great, but it'll help the people who keep putting food on our plates. Plusieurs industries traversent des moments difficiles et celle de la pêche n'y s'échappe pas. Non seulement les gens doivent ralentir ou même arrêter leurs activités pour protéger leurs travailleurs, mais le prix et la demande des produits de la mer ont également chuté. C'est pourquoi on va instaurer la prestation aux pêcheurs. Si vous êtes un pêcheur qui attend à une baisse de revenus de 25 cette saison, cette mesure sera là pour vous. 
On pourrait couvrir jusqu'à 75 de vos pertes, jusqu'à concurrence d'autour de 10 000 Et pour les gens qui sont admissibles à la subvention salariale d'urgence, on va prolonger le programme au-delà de juin, comme on l'a annoncé la semaine dernière. On va également offrir d'autres subventions non remboursables d'une valeur maximale de 10 000 pour les pêcheurs qui ont leur propre entreprise et qui ont besoin d'aide pour traverser cette période difficile. Et pour les travailleurs qui sont inquiets pour l'année à venir, on va aussi changer les règles d'assurance-emploi pour que les pêcheurs puissent demander des prestations d'assurance-emploi en fonction des revenus qu'ils ont gagnés dans les années précédentes. Vous nourrissez nos familles. On est à l'écoute de ce dont vous avez besoin pour traverser la crise. On est là pour vous. Je veux maintenant parler de ce qu'on fait pour soutenir les peuples autochtones qui font face à des difficultés particulières pendant la pandémie. On a accordé plus de 306 millions de dollars pour offrir des frais sans intérêt et des contributions non remboursables aux entreprises autochtones. Pour ce qui est des étudiants des Premières Nations et des étudiants Inuits et Métis, on accorde un soutien ciblé de plus de 75 millions de dollars, en plus d'aider les jeunes à trouver une job dans leur communauté cet été. Et pour les femmes et les enfants autochtones qui fuient la violence, on a investi 10 millions de dollars dans les refuges d'urgence. On a réalisé des progrès importants, mais on sait qu'il reste du travail à faire. Since day one, our government has been engaging with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis Nation leaders in the fight against this virus. In places like northern Saskatchewan that are dealing with COVID-19 outbreaks, it's become very clear that communities need this work to continue. That's why yesterday we announced support for the Meadow Lake Tribal Council and Métis Nation Saskatchewan for their pandemic response plan. Through this plan, We're partnering with communities to provide over $2.3 million for everything from food to supplies. We all want the same thing, to keep people safe. And we will continue coordinating to make sure that happens. I want to end today by recognizing that the May long weekend is coming up. It'll be different than normal because lots of places, including our national parks, are still closed. But this isn't forever. Canadians have been doing the right things these past many weeks. And that's why we can announce today some good news for the weeks ahead. As of the beginning of June, some national parks will be partially reopening so that people in the area can use trails and green spaces where physical distancing is possible. Getting fresh air is important, but we all have to be responsible about it we have to be prepared to make adjustments as needed. That's why, with the weather getting better, we're bringing in new regulations on boating as of June 1st to protect vulnerable communities in the north. No pleasure craft will be permitted to operate in Canada's Arctic coastal waters or in the coastal areas of northern Quebec and Labrador. Of course, this ban does not include boats used for essential fishing and hunting or for local community use. Les parcs nationaux vont rester fermés en fin de semaine, mais certains vont rouvrir le 1er juin. Vous allez pouvoir profiter des sentiers et des espaces verts en respectant les consignes de distanciation physique. Mais on doit rester prudent et on doit être prêt à s'adapter aux nouvelles circonstances. C'est pourquoi, à partir du 1er juin, les bateaux de plaisance ne pourront pas se rendre dans les eaux côtières de l'Arctique canadien ou dans les zones côtières du nord du Québec et du Labrador. C'est ce qu'on doit faire pour se protéger les uns les autres. Il faut se rappeler, par contre, que ce n'est pas pour toujours. Et si chacun fait, fa fait sa part, on va passer à travers. Merci.